Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from Tennessee, a home of who? Maybe I shouldn't name anybody this month, this week. How about Jeff Quinn, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, how about that? So, a lot of people live here, and maybe we shouldn't award anybody with special recognition. Everybody is equal, right? Well, not really. Everybody is equal in opportunity, right? But not in outcome. Yeah, we all should have equal equality in terms of our opportunities to do whatever we want to do, whatever our talents and our skills and our ambition, uh, whichever way they lead us. And, uh, you know, some people uh, have all kinds of talent and ambition and others don't just don't care that's what's so ridiculous about equality of outcome you know obviously people are not going to be equal in terms of what they produce duh uh everybody's different some people just don't care whatever the reason is uh, and some people do they work hard yeah they, uh, they're very creative maybe have lots of talent and some people are very creative with lots of talent but they don't work very hard and someone with less talent and creativity outshines them, right? It happens all the time. People are pretty complex, we haven't noticed, yeah. So a lot of it does come down to energy and effort and ambition. <laughs> so anyway, guess what? Today is Christmas, September, December the 25th, all right? And I found the day that's not too bad in terms of weather. We've been having some kind of rough weather lately. And uh, but you're waking up on Christmas morning right now and what are you doing watching a stupid Hickok 45 video? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about you if you're watching this on s Sunday morning. It may not speak well of you, <laughs> but maybe you catch it uh, at some point. Sunday night, Monday, the next Wednesday. Yeah, we leave these videos up. You can watch them anytime. Some people don't realize that, right? Guess what I'm shooting? 45 Colt. I thought on Christmas, day celebration i'd get out something that i like a lot <laughs> well interesting yeah. two things that i like a lot as you well know Good old Smith & Wesson revolvers, double action revolvers, especially end frames, big old end frame revolvers. Another thing I like a lot is the 45 Colt cartridge. And guess what? This Model 25 combines them. Yeah, so I get big old Smith & Wesson. Uh oh, don't you blow down target. Good thing I got a bullseye in. Uh, and I, uh, I get my favorite cartridge and a favorite firearm. And I thought, Christmas, man, I, I'm just going to shoot whatever I like. The, I don't know about the most, but something I really, really enjoy. The other gun I brought out that I really enjoy, because it is, again, it's the uh, kind of the three-year anniversary. You know, this is 156 Sunday shoot-arounds, really, in a row, isn't it? Have I not missed any? It's crazy. And uh, if you remember this fire... <laughs> When I first started doing the Sunday shoot arounds, I think, I think it was in Dece well, yeah, in December, I guess, or January 1st, I don't know, but it was, uh, I mean, I didn't pick, did I, the particularly uh, like the first day of the year or anything, first Sunday of the year, did I? Uh, but uh, I started doing it around this time, three years ago, and uh, then we went off to SHOT Show. 
And I guess that would have been the last SHOT Show, right? Yeah, that I went to. And so I think I was on the road for two different Sundays and had to do the uh, Sunday shoot around while I was on the road. Well, I don't know a lot of places where you can just kind of pull off the road and yak at you all and shoot bullets, <laughs> real ones. And I bought this gun. I think I bought this in Tombstone. Yeah. And uh, I'll have to go back and look at that video. And then I, this was my gun in a couple of videos. Uh, yeah. And one was sitting out in the kind of the desert, Arizona, on uh, some rocks, I think. And then uh, another one we did at, I remember at uh, Old Tucson, which is closed. And it was closed then too. I think it just closed up maybe. They're not open for business anymore, I don't believe. The Old Tucson where they made a lot of the movies. But we, uh, we drove around, walked around out there uh, outside in the desert and found a place and I sat down and did the, uh, had the camera and did a uh, Sunday shoot around there while we were on the road, I remember that. And this was my gun. Yeah, this cap gun. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, huh? Still have it. Yeah. So maybe I better hang on to this. I might need it. I'm on the road, do a Sunday shoot around because I just don't feel right talking to you all without a firearm in my hand. It's not that you all are so dangerous, I've got to be armed, but you, know, you never know, just have to have a firearm. Okay, so that's that cap gun. And it's great to see you all. Uh, glad to have you here on, on this auspicious occasion uh, for many, many, many people. And uh, again, it's Christmas Day, and it's also the 156th Sunday shoot around, three times 52, Kentucky math, Tennessee math. Yep makes 156 times and here we are hope santa came to see you this morning maybe left you some bullets perhaps right maybe some big old 45s they can get expensive can't they wow a box of new ammo in uh, like uh well 44 magnum or 45 colt wow you can be like 60 70 80 100 dollars see that stuff it's, it's pretty high but uh so anyway uh here we are and uh i don't know if i have anything important to say yeah new year's resolution time have you made them <laughs> have you made them <laughs> oh man you know every year the uh, the news media talks about that and and it's uh it's always a big deal. Yeah, what are, what are you going to resolve for the new year? If you made a new year, what did you break from last year and everything? And I should have some advice on that. Shouldn't I? I don't know. Uh, some more lame advice. Uh, I think people, uh, the reason they break them is they, they, they just make resolutions. They put out thinking too much about it and they're not really dedicated to it. It's always easy to say, oh, I'm gonna eat less or I'm gonna do this or that or I'm gonna exercise more and they don't give it anything specific, you know? And uh, that's a lot of it. And I think a real important point in all that is if you are gonna change something, I think it's really good to know yourself and know whether it's, say it's something you wanna start doing or you want to quit doing, or you want to taper off something you're doing, you know, obviously you want to maybe eat less, you want to smoke less or not smoke anymore, whatever the problem is, drink less, or whatever it might be. So a habit you want to break, in other words, or a habit you want to pick up. <laughs> Some people are better at doing something cold turkey, right? Uh, you know what that means? That means, <laughs> that means you have to eat cold turkey with whatever you're doing. No, it means just, just doing it. Like if you're gonna uh, give up smoking, you don't taper off, you just quit totally. Never smoke again, okay? That's what cold turkey means for some of you young people who may not know that. Uh, so you, it helps to know yourself. Is, is that how you are most successful in accomplishing tasks like that? Just, just don't do it anymore. Maybe you're gonna give up junk food, whatever it is, uh, it, historically, with you or have you been more successful in just quitting totally on one day? Pick a day and from then on you don't do it again. Uh, well, maybe you're not successful or else you wouldn't be still here in 2023 with that same old resolution <laughs> hoping you can, you can do it. I don't know, but 
Uh, so knowing yourself, I think, is good that, in that regard. And you can play with it, can't you? You could try both ways and everything. But I, for me, some things, cold turkey works best. I've had success with that. But I also have had better success, I think, at a, a gradual reduction of things. Uh, seems to, to help, I think. Uh, I think I, I was, uh, yeah, that's one of, uh, what's his name, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, he wrote the book, uh, what, the 12 Rules to Live By or 12 Rules of Life or something, the bestseller. Uh, one of his uh, tenets is uh, that bite off uh, goals or objectives that, that you know you can, you can meet, that you would and will do, you will do it, you know. And that's something that, that and before I ever read his book, that, that's something that, that I had found success with. Uh, just little things, get, just get at it, get started in a, in a minor way, whatever it is. You know, there's all, we always, all of us probably have a task that we're putting off, you know, let's clean out the garage or our office or whatever it is. And uh, we, just, uh, we just seem, uh, we're paralyzed because it's such a big task, right? And uh, I have found that if, if uh, and I discovered this years ago, not that I always do it, right, but, but if I just, okay, I'm just gonna, in this garage, I'm just gonna, every time I go into this garage, I'm gonna straighten up one thing or pick up a couple of things, that's all. That's all I'm gonna do, you know, okay? Uh, or I'm gonna, anything that's actual trash that should be thrown away, I'm just gonna pick up a couple of things that go in the trash can that, I, that don't even need to be organized. Need to be, you know, or something like that that, that would you know, like take 30 seconds. And that's all I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna do it every time I come in here, or something like that, really minor. And uh, that, that has worked pretty well for me. And then I've also discovered uh, once I get into that, I end up working more than 30 seconds. You know, it gets you started. But then again, you've got that license not to uh, to make an all-day project out of it because you've already got to deal with yourself. You're just uh, just going to pick up a couple of things, <laughs> and uh, that's helped me. Now, the the thing that I've not been able to do is quit shooting. I have a hard time breaking that habit. Okay, I've tried over the years by doing it gradually, and uh, cold turkey. Guess what? Nothing works. So. <laughs> Merry Christmas to myself. 45 slugs <laughs> coming out the barrel. I'm gonna shoot the SDI badge. <laughs> 45 Colt. There's a two liter right there that needs to be blasted. Oh man. See if I can weave a uh, bullet between those bowling pins and hit the cowboy. All right. Now I'm gonna knock the bowling pins out of the way. You hit the cowboy. Yeah. Click. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Yep, Merry Christmas to me. I'm, I'm shooting my uh, 45 Colt caliber uh, in frame Smith & Wesson, model 25. Just, just nice. This one was made in 1980, and uh, it, it's really sweet. I, I I like it. It's neat being able to fire a 45 Colt in that thing. Yeah, I love 44 Mag, and essentially the same same gun. You know, when I was shooting the the shots there, whether it's the factory ammo or my hand loads, I I was surprised a little bit and reminded oh, this is more comfortable to shoot than my uh, my 44 Magnum for sure. And that's something you want to do. You want to enjoy shooting. You know, there's, I said for years, and when I had a, a gun club where I taught for years with uh, youngsters, middle school age mostly, uh, I started out by letting them, by drilling into their heads. There's nothing macho about firearms. Get that out of your head for one thing. And then we'd go from there and go with the history and gun safety and everything. But, but uh, it really, it's fun. Now, you'll you'll run into people, and, and then we all go through that where oh we've got to have the most powerful ammunition you know for this gun, and and you know you just gotta you gotta shoot something that's gonna blow down the barn occasionally, right? We we all do that, uh, and I I enjoy doing that and full auto and different things at times, but not if it hurts 
I, I, I don't know. I, I never did enjoy it if it hurts. Well, I was 20 years old or 50. I, it, it's not. It's not fun. I might take a few shots. You know, it's see what it's like to shoot something really, really powerful. Uh, but it doesn't have to hurt, generally speaking. You can find firearms that are heavy enough. You know, like the X-Frame Smith & Wessons. Uh, those things kick a lot, uh, but, but, you know, they're heavy. They're big. And, you know, with reasonable ammo, they're not going to break your wrist. You know, so, and same with a rifle or a shotgun. If it's got a little weight to it, you can shoot a three-inch magnum. But, you know, it's going to kick. But so go get in your head you've got to you know uh, shoot some atomic ammo all the time they'll turn you against shooting that's no fun you're like what are you doing why do that we didn't even have magnum rounds until what 1935 or something when the 357 magnum came about and then all of a sudden everybody wanted a magnum but nobody was complaining that much about the velocity of even a 4440 or a 45 Colt or any of those those rounds, standard rounds. Uh, name name any round you want, rifle or handgun. Uh, there's always been some big rounds, but generally it was big bullets and big cartridges. You know, black powder, of course. Everything doesn't have to be magnum. It's not a proof of manhood, womanhood, or anything. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but. but it's an accuracy issue of anything. If you want to shoot something and be proud of, of something, you know, then the skill you have a, attained through shooting, uh, that's something you can show off with or be a proud of it if you want to, but not, don't be proud of, I can shoot this gigantic bullet that most people can't. I can stand it. I just broke three fingers is all. Most people would break their whole hand. You know? There's no thrill in that. So. Mainly, shoot for the fun of it. Don't even get caught up in the accuracy issue, like I was saying, just because you've gotten good or whatever. Is just enjoy it, you know. Just enjoy it. Just like going out to shoot some basketball. Isn't it fun? I mean, think about that. That's a good analogy, really. Uh, many of you have done that, going out on Saturday or going to the gym or intramurals or when you're in college or high school. Even if you never played on a team in basketball, some of you, I guarantee you, you've enjoyed just going in the gym shooting some basketball. And there are probably people in there that, that, that shoot way better than you and way worse, but it's fun doing it, right? It's just fun because you're seeing yourself improve a little bit and you you hit the basket just often enough to keep it interesting and and like ping pong or something, you, you get a little bit better at it and you win just enough to keep it interesting or you hit the basket often enough and then more often you're seeing the progress. You know? So anyway, uh, you know, just enjoy it for, for what it is. Uh, but anyway, back to resolutions. I think it helps to know what uh, what your nature is and what would work best for you. But but there's just uh, there's just so many different things that, that probably all of us uh, <laughs> could 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 improve in. And one of them is the clutter. You know, so many of us suffer from you know, clutteritis. I guess you know, in the garage or office or or anywhere. And uh, that's something that, that I work on all the time. Uh, I think diet is another. Uh, most of us can improve in that regard. I've improved a, a lot lately, and I still struggle with you know some of my sweet tooth or different things that are hard to give up. Uh, and uh, you know some of those goals, uh, like just biting off little chunks, like Peterson talks about, are are I think really a, a good approach, generally speaking. Just Maybe I, I remember him talking about a lecture about people. Uh, he was a clinical psychologist in, in addition to being this incredible intellectual, but um, working with people and those, setting those little goals, people like with severe depression, you can imagine being a psychologist, you run to people, you're trying to help that like are paralyzed with depression and all kinds of things. And he talked about in, uh, I don't know if it was his book or in a lecture about people being so depressed they can't even get out of bed can't even sit up hardly you know and just uh and then uh starting with them with just minor little uh goals like well can you sit up at least you can't get out of bed can you at least sit up for a little bit you know and you can't do that can you get up on your elbows just a little, you know just in other words just whatever that you could accomplish today and then do that and then maybe tomorrow you you do it again maybe for a week that's all you do and then next week you get up and sit on the bed 
maybe you don't get out, you know. And uh, it's a pretty interesting strategy, you know, that, that would probably help a lot of us. Because I think a lot of us, we, we have this mindset, okay, I've got to either get that garage cleaned out totally today or not. So I'm just going to go and touch it until I get some time. And, of course, I never get the time or get around to it. You know? And uh, with everything, I'm like, yeah, I need to change my diet. I need to quit eating this or I need to start eating better. Well, maybe the better approach would be for a resolution. We're still talking about resolutions. Um, okay, maybe if uh, maybe I'm drinking too much coffee or something or uh, whatever it is. Uh, maybe I just uh, drink one cup less, you know, or, or half a cup less or something. Or if I'm putting a bunch of sugar in my coffee, I reduce that by, I don't know, 10% this month. Next month, I reduce it by 20%. I gradually, you know, some little steps that make a difference and uh, before you know it. So maybe that's where we make our mistakes. So, you know, everybody uh, talks about how New Year's, New Year's resolutions are just made to be broken. Maybe it's because they're too big, you know? Just a thought. Meanwhile, I'll, I'll work on uh, my addiction of shooting. How's that? <laughs> well, that one got off too quick. Oh, All right, how about a buffalo over there? Got him. How about a red plate? Nice, nice gun. I think I'll keep it. Notice my red plate's still hanging there. <laughs> I fixed it a little better, didn't I? How about you, pig? Oh, yep. Called him a pig, but I was out of ammo. <laughs> I shouldn't insult him when I'm empty. So anyway, uh, you know, resolution, smoking, whatever it is you, you got going that you're trying to, to quit doing. Uh, I, I think I think getting started is the hard part, you know, and uh, and since that is the hardest part, maybe a smaller objective is the answer. You know, speaking of that, oh man, I'm showing very little battery power. If I lose you all of a sudden, I'll run and get a battery and finish up. So if I just disappear, no, I'm sorry, that's what it is. Uh, I knew I was getting low, but I didn't think I was that low. Uh, do I have any advice for young people? Well, I don't know, do I? Well, you know, that's advice for young people, I think, too. Uh, you know, how to like get started doing something or break a habit is maybe just a little bitty piece of it at a time. And uh, like a trail of crumbs, maybe it'll lead you to, to actually doing something more significant in, in terms of quitting doing something that's unhealthy or starting to do something that's healthy, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, not dwelling on the past, just looking into the future and what can you do to make yourself better. Uh, you know, we, we all think too much and dwell too much on the past, don't we? That's good advice, you know, there you go. Uh, and you know, we, when we're thinking about our past and how terrible we were or whatever it is, maybe, or how bad it was, I don't know, or even how good it was, something in the past, we, we may not be the best judge you know, we're not too objective since it's about ourself and our own experience. Maybe, uh, you know, we're not really looking, we're not that self-aware. We might be too hard on ourselves. Maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe we weren't that bad, you know? Or maybe if we think we were really good at something, we weren't even that good, you know? Who are we to judge? We're <laughs> we can't be objective about ourselves, right? So I don't know, it, it may not it may uh, make that much sense to beat ourselves up over the past. It may not make sense to uh, to reward ourselves over something we did in the past. You know, maybe maybe we don't even really have a clear picture of how bad we were or how good we were. You know, maybe we just need to focus on the future and put some thought into it. How's that? But uh, and I was just kidding. I am not trying to break my habit of shooting. I have no intention of breaking that habit. Right, cowboy? See. Oh, 
Mr. Uh, Pig, I didn't shoot you yet. There we go. I don't want to neglect him. <laughs> you know, why would I want to break the habit? You know, really. Why would I want to do that? Oh man. I tell you, speaking of Christmas, it's 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 they really like Christmas morning when you have a uh, firearm that you really enjoy and you can go shoot it, isn't it? It really is. Don't need another one. Of course, that will probably happen, right? It always does with me. Probably will with you too. Uh, but boy, just pulling out something you really enjoy. And uh, you know, I've been shooting these old pin barrel Smith and Wesson end frames since the early '70s, and uh, they're just uh, sweet. They really are. Uh, and big bore. I've always liked big bore cartridges. Again, not because of the power I want to blow down a barn. Because uh, you don't see me shooting the 500 Smith & Wesson that much, do you? Or the 460, those kinds of things very much out of a handgun. They're, they're interesting to play with. But, uh, I, you know, I, I just enjoy the moderate stuff. 44 Magnum. <laughs> Who'd have thunk that'd be moderate, right? And 44 Special, 357, 38, all that. 9mm, all the usual, usual things. But 40 Smith & Wesson, 10mm. I don't need something that uh, is going to break my wrist. Yeah, you know, not that it is, but it could. I've known people actually break their wrist, you know, with a, a 500 Magnum, that kind of thing. So you, you can do damage with that stuff. Uh, so, you know, but if you need to prove what a man you are, yeah, have at it. <laughs> have at it. So, uh, I don't know if I had anything else. Uh, oh, I know, I, I got a rant. I always like, I like to have a rant. That's not really a rant, and I don't want to run out of battery, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I, 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 I know I'm an old guy and everything, and it's a totally different generation, but I'm still perplexed with people that uh, just are not, it still seems, it, it's one reason, and I try not to pick on millennials as a group or young people as a group, you know, you hear people all the time say, well, millennials can't talk to you. They just text each other and all that kind of thing. And you probably know there's some truth to that. Your friends, if you are a millennial, you probably know some people like that. But I try not to just to stereotype and pigeonhole people and, and gripe about them all the time. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't understand some folks. I, uh, I'm kind of a friendly type, you know, if I, I, you know, I mean, life is short. If I'm in, at the grocery, I'll speak to the clerk, say, how you doing, or just talk to them a little bit, maybe, or not, just depends. I don't want to come off as a creepy old man or anything, or a creepy guy, you know, you always worry about that, but I, I just, I just, you know, life is short, you know, how you doing, you know? Or, uh, um, but it, it's just interesting, I was at a, a, a bath and, bed, bath and beyond, is that it? Yeah, with my wife, uh, recently, very recently, I was at a mall. We don't go to malls much. But I was in there with her, and it was one of those. That, they didn't have a lot of stuff. Something the bad Bed Bath and Beyond. They have sometimes some interesting stuff. I like to look at. This one was just mainly. It was all uh, I don't know shampoo, uh, bathroom stuff. It was just uh, you know cologne or whatever. That, that's all it was uh, in a mall. Probably went in with her and looking around. Really nothing. I was interested in it at all. But I was just in there for a little bit and. And she bought some stuff, and I was up at the counter with her, and the gal was checking her out. I don't know how old she was, 25, 30, I don't know. Can't tell with people. Uh, and, uh, of course, I'm a big old ugly guy there with her, and my wife is buying stuff, and I just I just said it. Because it you could smell it. It's like being in a candle shop, everything in there, or something smelled good. I said, I said uh, uh, ma'am, do you have anything to make me smell better? Just kidding, you know? And uh, I mean, she looked at me and didn't realize I was just joking around and just looked kind of perplexed. So there's some uh, uh, there's some cologne over there, you know, and stuff. And, and she wasn't very friendly to begin with, but she, there's some cologne over there and she went on what she's doing. And it wasn't like she uh, uh, understood that I was kidding and was being, and didn't think it was funny and was just ignoring my lame attempt at a joke or anything like that. She legitimately just thought I was serious that I, you know, in a way I, 
<laughs> but you know, that kind of thing happens every now and then. And you just say, okay, it was a joke. And my wife said, oh, he was just kidding. You know? But, you know, no smile, nothing. You know, it's, just, it's just weird. Uh, a lot of people have difficulty, like, engaging at all, even for a brief moment. Uh, being human, it's weird, you know. I've had th that happen, and I'm not bugging people and always making lame jokes. It's just some people can't even have a short, uh, informal exchange at all, you know. I mean, it's just weird. It's just weird. Uh, and it is a generational thing, kind of. I, I think that, uh, uh, I, I, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think most people under 30, maybe under 40, you know, they go about their business and they get their card out and pay for their stuff. And they're not, they're not going to even make a joke. They're not even going to have a conversation with, with the, uh, the clerk necessarily unless it's something serious, maybe. I, I, I don't know. It's just a lot of people are just a little uh, uptight. I, that's my impression. You know, it really is. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, I, I've just said hi to people before, you know, like people were, you know, in a Walmart one time not long ago, a uh, lady was up on a ladder and she was stocking stuff and in you know, awkward position, you know, and and it was like early in the morning and then she got a tough job. And as I walked by there, I said, now don't you fall off that ladder. You know, you're just, just being nice to her. Didn't say a word. Like, oh, I wouldn't do that. Or, you know, it's just, it's just weird when people have like no reaction nothing to say like leave me alone you know now i understand it if if you come off as creepy or something yeah that's that's it and i i go out of my way to never come off like that that's just uh but but anyway i don't know that's it's just odd uh if you're a young person maybe that's some advice for young people uh and old people there's a lot of crotchety old people but uh lighten up a little bit you know, I mean, lighten up. I mean, life is short. And you're going to realize that. And uh, there's enough people on the planet who they're antisocial. They're never going to be nice to you. And they're going to give you a hard time. You know, so if someone comes into your store or your place of business, whatever it is, and they're uh, halfway civilized, I mean, uh, be thankful. Be thankful. You know, so anyway, love advice. None of it good. Can I shoot six more times before I let you go and get back to your Christmas tree? Okay. Yeah, man. Well, we've about made it through another year. And uh, hope to see you in 2023. <laughs> yeah, I really do. It's hard to believe in it. I remember back in the, whatever the 80s or 90s, we were talking about the year 2000. Seemed so far away. It really did. Pretty good shooter, yeah. I like that. Yeah, man. So I've probably yacked enough. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you were dying to know about. <laughs> probably not. Uh, so anyway, again, I don't know why I forget to do the disclaimer at the beginning of these every every week. But uh, if you're new, this is a Sunday video, right? And I uh, hope you're catching the other videos during the week, like you know, maybe three of them, two or three every week, in addition to the Sunday videos. We have 2,500 videos, I guess, up, up and, and I get a constant barrage of questions. Do you have anything on this? Do you have a video on that? And usually it's yes, you know, we do. Now I don't go look up the link and I'll post it, you know, you know, just, you all know how to search a channel. And, uh, you know, uh, we got videos on there, all kinds of guns, and uh, so if you're new, uh, you might find something you like, even if it's 10 years old, 15, well, 14 years old. I think it's coming up on 15 years, yeah. So if I get cut off, uh, I'll uh, see you next week, but I know we're right at the edge here. Yeah, just a little time left, and uh, I'll be more careful next week and check my battery more carefully before I come over here into the woods. But actually, I'll bring a, a spare battery. How's that? So anyway, we're into the winter and uh, uh, going to be some cold days out here. Not too bad today, but it's, uh, it's, it's going to be cold. And uh, like I say, I will 
probably be out here, but I might be in the barn and I uh, might do a little traveling and I might, uh, who knows, I might be in the desert, you know, talking to you and with no gunfire. Maybe I'll patch in some gunfire, okay? <laughs> but uh, that's another option I could do if I'm traveling or if it's too cold. I could just say hi and uh, here's a video you haven't seen <laughs> or something like that. But I uh, appreciate y'all coming out on Sundays and especially on Christmas morning. You got all those presents to open and here you are on your computer or phone, you know, watching me shoot. That's pretty lame. That's pretty lame. So it's actually probably not Christmas morning for you. You're probably uh, later in the day or the next day or who knows when. Uh, but I do post it at least 5 a.m. my time. And so, yeah, maybe so. You never know. Before Santa got to your house, you might be watching this. So anyway, uh, if you have kids, I hope they all had a big morning and enjoy the day and you enjoy the day. You get to spend it with some family and that your family's not too obnoxious. And uh, of course, everybody's got that uncle or that brother-in-law, right? But uh, that's the way it goes. So uh, Merry Christmas to those of you who, uh, who celebrate Christmas and uh, it's a great time of year. And I guess I'll see you in, yeah, 2023 if my math is correct. Yeah, I don't wanna to talk to y'all until next year. Yeah, that's right. So appreciate your support. Talk to you later. Life is good.